Hi, I'm Carrie Stevens. Author of Unrated Revelations of the Rock and Roll Centerfold. From just a magazine. Yeah, you just smile in the picture sells. Look what that does to And you're listening to Play That Rock and Roll. to you about KISS is more in regards to, you know, your complicated um, relationship with the, that fandom and that world is, is not just about Eric. Is there's stories in your book about your interactions with, with Gene and Paul, and those weren't always positive. In fact, it sounds with Paul, they weren't very positive. You know, it's not really like they treat it. I'm not saying my interactions with them were bad. I mean... Uh, it was more my um, opinion later about um, how they treated Eric in the end. Um, right. You know, he had a great relationship with them for, you know, 11 years or something. And then his last year with the band was rough. And then he got sick yep. and they didn't handle it well. And, um, of course, you know, I wasn't happy with... Um, them for the way that they treated him. I think, I don't want to speak for them, but I think they realized they could have done things better and differently. And it was a tough time. Everybody was under pressure. Nobody knew exactly what was going to happen. They were coming from a business perspective. I was coming from, you know, the perspective of somebody that was his girlfriend that was at, at every doctor's appointment. I was in the hospital bed with him. I was seeing the pain. I was feeling the pain as if I were the patient. So, and they weren't there at all. So, um, yeah. So my my relationship um, was emotional. I wish there had been a little bit more emotional for them, and they had more compassion. It seems like they were more about business, and they're notorious for being about business. Of course. Um, Gene and I never had any. Uh, they were never. No, no, not, they were never mean to me or rude to me personally. Um, and Gene and I remained friends, you know, later on, we became friends and, you know, I told him exactly how I felt about all of this and he was all ears and he put me on the cover of his magazine and he quoted everything I said, including, you know, that I hated them for what they did and that, and that made me respect him um, because, you know, he's a very outspoken person, but if you're like, you know, if you're going to be outspoken and you're going to have your opinions, you have to allow other people to speak too and to have their opinions and he does that. So that's cool. Um, I don't really, I'm sick of, you know, bashing Paul because every time I say anything bad about Paul, some podcaster has a headline like, next up, why Carrie Stevens hates Paul Stanley. Oh, sure. And yeah, they, you know, to get, to make it uh, sensational. And I'm not saying I hate Paul Stanley. I'm saying that he did some things, you know, yeah. that, are, that are, were rude and wrong, um, like exploit me in his own memoir. And I think I deserve to defend myself, um, you know, because he wrote it in my his memoir, like Eric was dating some playmate. By the way, I was not a playmate when he died in 1991. I was right. 22 years old and my, uh, I was Miss June 1997. So don't sensationalize me. Don't even give me a name. I'm just some playmate. When it, that, do you need more sensationalism? You're Paul Stanley, yeah. you know, so you really need to uh, use me. So... I didn't like that, and I didn't like that he said uh, that I acted bizarre or, you know, at, the, at his wake and took his drumsticks out of his hand, which was a complete fabricated lie. And I don't know if he had a ghostwriter that made that up or if he made it up. So I'm not saying I hate Paul, but I'm sure he had to approve it and edit it. And it was just wrong. You know, it was, it was, he took like the most painful moment of my life, standing over my boyfriend's coffin and exploited that in his memoir. And... I chose not to put it in my memoir because my book is not about Paul Stanley. It's about me. Um, so I didn't go there, you know, but I have been vocal about it in interviews because I think, I, I think that's the proper place to discuss it is more in an interview about the book. I didn't want to make my book about him. So that's not there. So, but that, that's my, my, my feelings. And besides, I, I think I've been extremely fair in, um, my interviews, you know, when I've been questioned about how they treated him, because there's tons of rumors 
swirling, you know, amongst the fans. And um, I get accused of all kinds of things. I get accused of not telling the truth. I guess people just don't want to listen to my podcast or read my book because you wouldn't believe the amount of people. Um, but you know what? For every thousand love letters, I get, you know, one psycho hate one saying, you know, is anyone ever going to tell the truth about Gene and Paul firing him? And yeah, they did. They didn't exactly fire him, but they tried to get him to resign. Right. You know, they were pressuring him while he was on his deathbed uh, to resign. Um, and he did not. He never signed those papers. He did. He was not going to. And he. So, yeah, that, that, that pissed me off because I, I didn't want him to be stressed out. I wanted him to you know, relax and heal and any girlfriend, wife, whatever, you know, we, that's anybody would feel like I felt. So it's not that controversial what I'm saying. I just, you know, I would have liked everyone to be, you know, loving, believing that he was going to be okay and, and not stressing him out while he was sick. Is that too much to ask? Right. That's really all I'm saying. And, and, and that happened. And I've been extremely fair in saying that, you know what, I think if they could go back and do things differently, they probably would. I mean, oh, sure. like I said, it all happened very quickly, and I would like to think that they would. I don't know. I'm not psychic, but giving the benefit of the doubt, I would like to think that. It's, it's, yeah, it's obviously it's a very, very complicated issue, and it, it's just too bad that you know Paul decided to be tacky about it or tacky about you in his book. I'll never get an apology or anything like that, but I bet he regrets he did that too, because how can you feel good about doing that? You know, yeah. I think a lot of people just do mindless things and I try to have compassion for people, even Paul Stanley, but you know what? I've done some things, not quite that bad, but you know, I've made some comments sometimes on Twitter or done such, and then I went, uh, you know, maybe I should have like worded it different or stayed out of that or not, you know, so well, people make mistakes, but that was a bad one. <laughs> yeah, and I almost wonder with Paul, and this is just me speculating, I wonder if that was just a coping mechanism for it. Like, maybe he just couldn't deal with some of his own internal guilt for how he treated both you and Eric, and he just kind of took it out in anger. But anyway. Eric's girlfriend, a Playboy playmate he'd been with for several years, briefly took the drumsticks out of the casket for some reason, and Eric's fingers moved as she did. Though I thought I had made the best choices at the time, I began to realize I'd been wrong. We had cut Eric off in perhaps the worst way by denying him what mattered to him most, his place in KISS.